Hello friends! I am back again with another tutorial. This one is going to be a super simple tutorial and uh, it's going to be knitting. So if you've been looking for an easy, quick knitting pattern to get some stash yarn busted or scrap yarn busted, this is definitely for you. It's perfect for beginners who are a little bit adventurous. So let me show you what we're going to be making today. Here I have a hot water bottle. It's under there, I promise. You can see it's got a little twisty thing. So this is a hot water bottle cover and it's plain knit and stocking stitch. So it's super, super simple, super quick, super easy. So if you're looking for something to bust your stash, to get rid of some scrap yarn laying around, or if you just want something very, very cute and cozy for your house for winter, this is a lovely project. Now, um, water bottles are super, super useful. Hot water bottles are. You can fill them up with nice hot water and on cozy, chilly nights, you can kind of keep it tucked under the blanket with you and it'll keep you nice and warm. If you're struggling with some cramping, some muscle pain, anything like that, you can just put some hot water in here and lay the hot water bottle on the area that is cramping or you have muscle pain. So these things are pretty handy. And with a cute little knit sleeve to go over it, a little hot water bottle cozy, if you will, what more could you want? Very charming. It adds to the homemade life look. So if you're interested in making this, then this is the right video for you. Now this pattern is specifically for this water bottle that I have. So uh, it's about a six and a half by 10. So it's six and a half wide by 10 tall. And I do have these listed in my shop if you want to get the exact water bottle that I have used for this pattern. So if you head to my shop, I'll put a link in the description, um, you'll find it there. They're reasonably priced. And um, I also have yarns too that I sell. This is one of my hand dyed yarns called Don't Call Me Sweetie. And I dyed this for Halloween and it's inspired by Chucky, the very aggressive <laughs> doll, the murder doll. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to get demonetized. Even though I'm not monetized yet. But you know what I mean. It's Chucky the doll who um, they made the horror movie after. So if you're interested, you can grab some hand-dyed yarn to do your, your little cozy in, your hot water bottle cozy. And you can get this exact hot water bottle that I've made this pattern for. So that's enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Now I have written all of these instructions down on my blog. <clears throat> I'll link that below as well. So let's start. For our materials, we're gonna need four millimeter needles, circular, and we're gonna need them long enough to where we can do magic loop. So this is, what I used for the first one and these were long enough for me so this is what I'm going to be using again. You won't need a marker because with magic loop you know there's a front and a back so if you want to get a marker to mark the front side of your work that is something you can do but um, if you're comfortable not doing that that's fine you won't need a marker. All right, and then we're going to need, let's let me just put these down. You're gonna need around 50 grams of worsted weight yarn. So here I have some yarn that I dyed last season. I believe this was called Fall Leaves. I have another Fall Leaves out this year. It's not the same one. <clears throat> this was from last season. So this is an older yarn that I've dyed. And I'm trying to work through my stash. So, <laughs> I'm just doing everything I can. I'm surrounded by yarn and I'm trying to get through it. <laughs> so I've got my yarn here and this is 
just some worsted weight yarn that I had in my um, scrap bin. You can do the same, just grab whatever. You can make it one color, you can make it 16 colors, whatever you wanna do. It's plain stocking stitch. So once you get past the increases for the bottom of the water bottle, you can do whatever you want. I mean, shoot, if you're comfortable, you can do stripes on the increases as well. Just use your imagination. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm gonna pull out a length of yarn here and I'm going to grab my needles and I'm going to make a slip knot. So I'm gonna leave a tail so I can weave that in later. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my slip knot and I'm gonna put it on my needle. So I've got one needle with a slip knot on it. Now I'm going to take my other needle and I'm gonna hold it right in front. So they're stacked on top of one another. So this needle with the stitch marker is in the back and here we go in the front. And then I'm just gonna start wrapping. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. Now I'm gonna pause here. Now this is called the Turkish cast on and we're gonna cast on 22 stitches. Now 22 stitches is going to be on each needle. So I have three loops here. So I have technically three stitches on each needle right now. So I'm going to continue on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <clears throat> eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now you don't wanna do this too tight. You don't wanna just be pulling and doing it, right? You wanna make it a little comfortable, like a little loose, but not too loose. Um, here's 22 stitches we've got on this needle. And now our yarn is coming from the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pinch this here and then we're going to turn it like this. So we're gonna make those needles face the other way. Now our yarn is coming up and over. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this bottom needle and we're just gonna pull it on out. Perfect. Now we're going to just knit through these. So we're gonna knit one, two, three, four, uh oh, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Perfect, we have 22 stitches now on that needle. Drop this, let it go. <clears throat> so you drop that left needle and just drop it because it'll get fiddly otherwise. So go ahead, pinch your work and then we're gonna turn it again. So now we've got that needle facing this way. Take the needle you just dropped and push it back into here. So we're getting the needles back in place. So now both of our needles are back in place. Don't grab your tail yarn. Make sure to grab your working yarn. Grab your working yarn. And then now we're back in our, our starting position, right? So now we're working needle two. So we just worked needle one, now we're gonna work needle two. But there's something you need to pay attention to in the beginning of this needle. Notice here we have our slip knot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that slip knot right off and then let it go. We don't need it. So we've got our yarn ready to go. I'm gonna take this bottom needle and pull it out. 
make sure not to pull it all the way through. Leave your cord, leave some cord on the other end here. Now I'm going to do the knit stitches once again. So knit one, two, three, four, five, and I'm not gonna keep counting because it's annoying. Twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. So now we've got twenty-two stitches on both needles, which is what we're expecting and what we want. Get to the end, drop that needle. Just let it do whatever it wants to do. Drop everything. <laughs> now we're going to pinch, do the same thing, turn our work, slide the needle back in, and now we're at the beginning. Now we've worked one whole row. So we've worked needle one, we've worked needle two. So now we're going to go to the next step. That was our cast on. And what that's going to do is create like a beautiful little um, beginning. Let me show you on the finished piece here. So we're creating the bottom part here. And if I turn it, you can see that it just looks like a continuation of knit stitches. And that's what we just did. So there's going to be no seam or anything. It's just gonna be just a continuation all the way around. <clears throat> okay. So now we're ready to start our increase rows. So for this row, what we're going to do, we've got our stitch, our needle set up here. I'm going to go ahead and give me one second, actually. All right, that was no time for you, but I had to stop and get something to drink because my mouth was a little dry. Okay. So now we're going to start the repeat of the rows one and two. So if you're reading the instructions that I have on my blog, we just finished row one knit plain. So we've cast on 22 stitches and then we did our first plain knit row. Now we're gonna work row two. So I'm gonna pull my needle out and then I'm gonna let it flop around a little bit and get it comfortable. So now for row two, we're going, the first stitch, we're going to knit front back. So KFB is knit front back. So I'm gonna knit as usual and I'm going to keep that stitch on the needle and then I'm going to reinsert my hook while holding the stitch I've already created, I'm gonna insert it through that back leg and I'm gonna knit through the back leg. So now I have two stitches that I've just created. Go ahead and slide that off and that's the knit front back. So now I've done an increase here. Now I'm going to work plain knit all the way to the last two stitches. All right, when I get to the last two stitches, here they are on my needle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knit front and back in this next stitch. So we're gonna do that one more time that we, get, we did at the beginning. So I knit front and back, and then I'm gonna knit one. And then if you notice that your stitches here are getting a little loose, don't worry, that's the beginning, you can just tighten it up like so. So whenever we weave this end in, everything's gonna be fine. So now we're going to drop our needle, drop everything, pinch, twist, and then scoot that needle back. 
So now we're on needle two. So we're gonna do the same thing that we just did for needle one on needle two. So let's get set up here. I'm gonna pull my bottom needle out and then I'm going to start working. So I'm gonna go knit front back. So knit front back on that first stitch and then I'm gonna to knit to the last two stitches. So I'm gonna continue working along. And I'm just loving the way this yarn is just presenting such a beautiful gradient between the purple and the pink. Oh my goodness. I dye yarn sometimes and then I just, I keep one for myself and throw it in my stash. And then sometimes I don't get to it right away. It's been almost a year since I dyed this one. <clears throat> but I, I come to it and I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Okay. So now I'm at my last two stitches, knit front back, and then knit one. Ooh, this can be real fiddly. Okay, there we go. Drop it, pinch, twist, and trust me, as you go on, that will get easier. All right. So now we just finished a row two. Here's what we have so far. It doesn't look like much, right? It doesn't look like it's going to be much of anything at this point. But eventually, as we form these increases, this will start to fold. You'll see it's starting, starting to want to do it right now on this end over here, but it's not quite there yet. So let's continue on. What we're going to do is now do row one. So we're going to knit plain all the way across. So let's go ahead and do that. I've knit row, um, row one, needle one, so now I'm moving on to row one, needle two. So I've gone ahead and flipped this over. Go ahead and pull that needle out and then keep going. Now if you ever, let me stop here for a second. If you ever are working through and you get confused and you're like, oh my goodness, what did I just do? Always check your second stitch. If your second stitch has a little bump going across it, like it's a purl stitch, you know that that's an increase row. So if you come to this and you can't remember, do I need to do an increase or am I just knitting plain? Just look at this. If you see the bump, go ahead and knit plain because that's an increase. You just did an increase on that previous row. So go ahead and knit plain. You don't know how many times I've done that and been like, oh my goodness, I can't remember what I need to do now. And then if you ever get to where you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm on row, I don't know if I'm on needle one or needle two. Whenever you're working, your um, tail yarn should be to the left. So I just worked this needle and let's say I have no idea which needle it is. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I go to turn my work and I scooch this down and I can look and I can read my knitting. Oh, look, it's starting to fold. So I can read my knitting and I can say, okay, I have no idea where I'm at or what I need to do here. My tail is to the left, which means that this is a needle one. So I'm at the start of the row. And if I look here and I get real close, and I look at my stitch here, my next stitch, I can see that that's a knit stitch. And here's my increase right here. That little pearl bump in front is my increase. So I know that I just did a plain knit row. So if I'm on needle one with a plain knit row facing me, 
I know that I need to do an increase row. Now, <clears throat> that's going to save your butt so many times because I don't care how much you're paying attention, you're, especially when you're working stocking stitch, you're going to start scooting through this stuff and you're going to space out and you're going to start thinking about something else and then you're going to be like, oh my goodness, I can't remember what I was doing. And that's going to save your butt. So always remember, look for the bump. If you see a bump on the stitch that you're currently working, you need to just knit plain. And then if you don't know what needle you're on, look for the yarn. Where's it at? If it's to the left, you're on needle one right here. If you're starting, if you're ready to knit, and you're, your yarn is over here to the left, you're on needle one. If you're starting to knit and your yarn is to the right over here, you're on needle two. That helps me. Hopefully it helps you. So we just completed a knit row. <clears throat> now we're going to complete a row two, which is going to be another increase row. So as your work starts to fold, right, which is what mine's doing, so it's pretty easy to tell what we need to do right here, right? So we need to pull the bottom needle. But when you have your needles like this, it can be a little confusing as to which needle to pull, especially if this is the first time you're doing magic loop. And what I always like to remember is that I always pull the needle from where the yarn's coming from. So I just work this row. So I'm going to pull this needle out. I want to work on the needle that doesn't have the yarn attached to it. So let me go ahead and pull that needle out. And then I'm going to start doing my knit front back. Whenever you're working Magic Loop, you want to kind of let the needle do whatever it's going to do. Like it's not wanting to knit comfortably here. It's wanting to knit comfortably when I have it twisted that way. Why? I don't know. And then when you're starting that first stitch, take your finger and kind of press that fabric in the back close to this stitch. And that's going to help you um, not get gaps right here. So if you're knitting and you're starting to notice you've got real big gaps where your sides are joined, that's why. So if you're knitting and you're like this, right, if you're just holding on to this needle and then you're knitting, you could run the chance of having a really long piece of yarn floating right in between that. So just take your other finger, take your middle finger of your left hand. If you're a continental knitter, if you're not, um, I don't know what to tell you to do because I'm a continental knitter. <laughs> so just make sure that you're pressing that fabric here close to this stitch. And now when you go in, you do your increase. So we're going to knit front and then we're going to go and knit in the back and then go ahead and drop that stitch off and then give it a little tug. So once you give it a little tug, you should be good to go. And then just keep knitting down. And we're going to knit to the last two stitches and scooch that yarn as you go. All right, so we're at the last two stitches, so I'm gonna go ahead and knit front back on this next stitch. So knit front. If you notice that your yarn's kind of like, oh my goodness, I need to try to get in here and get to the back, just whenever you knit that first stitch for the knit front back, just hold it with your finger and move it out of the way, and then you can get to that back leg a little bit better. And then knit one. All right, so now I'm gonna drop everything, let everything fall, and I'm gonna pinch and twist. So there we go. <clears throat> Push that needle back through. Now my work's starting to fold a little bit easier, which is fantastic because that means I'm going to be able to move a little bit quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second needle. So knit front back. Give a little tug so it's tight and then knit to the last two stitches.
I'm just naturally wanting to go to the right here on this screen in this frame. I don't know why. This is straight on for me right now. I don't know why I'm wanting to move right. All right, so I'm at my last two stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and knit front and knit back and then knit one. Drop everything, pinch, twist, turn, and then scooch that needle back. All right, so this is what you should have so far. And I'm not gonna go through any more of the increase rows here. We're gonna work on that by ourselves and then meet back when we're done. But uh, this is what you should have so far and I'll show you what we're making. So what we're currently making is this portion right here. So we've done this cast one and now we're working this curve that's going to go up. And what that's going to do is it's going to sit very nicely up against the curve here at the bottom. So we're currently in the process of doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing our row one and row two. So our plain and then our increase row until we have 34 stitches on each needle. So what I like to do is whenever I'm doing my plain knit stitch row, I like to count then so I can, you know, get an idea of where I'm at. So on this next row, I'm going to end up counting and finding out how many more stitches I need to go. But I've worked two rows, so I should have 26 stitches on this needle, and so should you. All right, I'll see you when we have 34 stitches on our needle. All right, so now we've got 34 stitches on our needles, or at least you should have if you're following along. So let's do a little test here. So I'm gonna take my, my hot water bottle bladder and just snug it on down in there. And look at that, just beautiful. Fits so nice and snug. Exactly what we want. Be careful, don't knock your stitches off the end of the needle. I've done that before. It's very disheartening. Okay, so now we're past that uh, curve there. So now we're just going to work knit stitches all the way around until the piece measures six and three quarters inches. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. So let's see. We're just going to pick up, remember, yarn's coming from there, so we want to pull from there. Don't pull it all the way through. So you see how I have like this little bit of cord here at the end? You want a little bit of cord at the end, because that's what's going to keep the magic loop in place. If you do pull, you're going to have to separate your stitches like in half again, right down the middle. So make sure when you're pulling, don't pull all crazy and like pull this cord all the way tight so it joins. Just a word of caution. So I'm going to go ahead and knit. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to knit all the way until the whole piece from the cast one edge. So from here when you're measuring it from here to here measures six six inches six and three quarters inches <laughs> I don't know how to say that correctly all right I'll meet you back there all right so I've gotten my height of my piece done and I'm sitting just at the six and three quarter inch which should bring it up to about here on the little hot water bladder if you're using the one that I have in stock and the one that I'm using right here. So now we're gonna begin our decreases. So I've tested to see that it fits in there quite nicely. Now we're gonna start working on the curve around here that comes up to the 
to the neck of this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this very carefully so I don't drop my stitches off the needle. Let go, buddy. And I'm going to get set up. So let me check where I am here. So yes, my yarn is on the left. So I'm at a needle one, row one. Okay, perfect. So our first row is going to be, we're going to pull our needle out here and we're going to, let me get that close. We're going to slip that first stitch as if to knit, slip that st second stitch as if to knit, and then we're going to slide our needle in through those legs and knit those two together. So that's a slip, slip, knit. And now what we're going to do is knit to the last three stitches. All right, so I'm at the last three stitches now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit two together. So I'm going to take these two stitches, go into the second one from the front. I'm gonna go in through both of them. Yarn over, pull through, and I'm gonna knock both of those off. <coughs> and then I'm gonna knit one. Drop everything, turn it, and then push my needle back in. And now I'm going to do needle two. Needle two is going to be the same thing. So we're going to slip that first stitch as if to knit. So I'm going to slide my needle in to the front, drop it off, do the same for the second, and then I'm going to knit both those together. Now I'm going to knit to the last three stitches. All right, so I'm at the last three stitches now. So what I'm going to do next is knit these next two together. So go in through that second stitch, grab both those legs, knit them together, and then drop them off the needle. And then I'm gonna knit one. So I've just completed row one of the knee creases. So let's get set up for, uh-oh. Okay, so here's a good example of what happens when the um, cable cinches up. Right, so I pulled too much cable length out, and honestly, I probably should be using a little bit of a longer cable, but this is what I have right now. So you can see here that, uh-oh, like my stitches are together. It's usually pretty easy to tell where to pinch and pull that cable. So I've got this little loop right here that's a little bit longer, so I'm just going to pull the needle and get it situated back. So if you pull too much of your cable out and you close it up, just look for where those stitches are separated. And then on your next row, just count to make sure that you're even again. So just count um, when you're knitting to make sure you have an equal number of stitches on each needle. All right, so for our decrease row two, we're just gonna knit plain all the way across. So anytime it says knit plain, and this is something I picked up from doing vintage patterns, knit plain is just knit all the way around. 
nothing fancy, no decreases, no increases, no special stitches, just knitting plain. <clears throat> the first time I ever encountered that, I was like, what do you mean knit plain? Is that something special? Like, what do you mean? And I overthought it. I spent way too much time trying to figure out what that meant. And so I Googled and Googled and found, I finally ended up on a Reddit thread a bunch of people who knit vintage crochet or vintage um, patterns and they were like just knit it just knit it regular just knit <laughs> stop overthinking it all right I'm on needle two knitting plain Alright, so I just finished my needle two, and now I'm getting set up to start my row one again. So we're going to repeat row one and two until I have 26 stitches on the needle. So we're going from 34 to 26. Right now we should have 32 because we just did one decrease row. So go ahead and do row one and two. And then when you have 26 stitches, I'll meet you back here. All right, so now I've got 26 stitches on both of my needles. So there's 26 here and 26 here. You can see now we've got this nice little curve. But the problem with this water bottle, well, not the problem, but the construction of this water bottle is that we have a curve and then we have a very sharp um, slope here. So we're, we're still decreasing, but we're very, very rapidly decreasing. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start decreasing every row. So now we're going to work row one until there are 14 stitches on each needle. <clears throat> so it's just going to be decreased rows every time. So I'm going to go ahead and start that and then once I'm done and have 14 stitches on my needle I'll meet you back here. All right, so I've got 14 stitches here on my needle. Now we're ready to move on to the final step. Well, the next to final step. <laughs> I consider bind off the final step. So before we go any further, you may be asking yourself, how are we gonna get <clears throat> this thing in there? Well, this thing bends so we can bend it, put it in there, unfold it, let it unfold naturally, and then it'll fit in there. So I got a lot of questions about that on my Instagram and Facebook. Like, how do you get it in there? You fold it. And this is stretchy too, so that helps. All right, so let's do the ribbing now. So now that we have 14 stitches on the needle, we're going to start our knit one, purl one ribbing. In my knit one purl one ribbing, I like to do ribbing by knitting in the back loop because it gives a cleaner looking ribbing in my opinion. So I'm going to knit through the back loop on that first stitch. Then I'm going to purl, knit through the back loop, purl, and that's it. You just knit, purl, and you do that all the way around until you have an about two and a half inches of this ribbing. And it's gonna go a lot faster than you think because there's only 14 stitches on each needle. So you're gonna zoom through this part and it'll be over before you know it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my knit one purl one ribbing for two and a half inches and I'll meet you back here so we can bind off together. All right, and here we are, <clears throat> two and a half inches roughly of ribbing for the neck. Now here comes the final part. Finally! So now we're going to bind off. 
and we're going to do a super stretchy bind off because we want this to be stretchy stretchy so we can get that um, water bottle bladder in there so what we're going to do first is we're going to knit through the back loop and then we're going to yarn over like so and then we're going to purl And then we're going to grab the yarn over and the knit stitch and we're going to pull them over and drop it off. And then we're going to yarn over and then we're going to knit through the back loop and we're going to grab the yarn over and the purl that we did earlier, pull that over, yarn over, purl, grab both, pass them over yarn over, knit through the back loop. And then pass it over. So including that little bit of extra gives it a little bit of stretch. And make sure you're not pulling too tight on the bind off as well. So you want to keep your, your tension pretty loose up here. And that'll ensure that you have a very stretchy bind off. Let's keep going on through. This shouldn't take too long at all. Once you get in the motion, it's, it's easy peasy. All right, so I've come to the last stitch on my first needle. So now I'm just gonna drop that left needle that I was holding. I'm going to turn my work all the while holding that. And then I'm gonna pull that other needle through. All right, so now we're ready to continue on. Go ahead and pull those over. Oh my goodness, I dropped it. I don't think I have a pair of scissors in here, or maybe I do. I'm just thinking ahead and I have to break the yarn in a second. I might have, I might have some over here in the corner. We'll see. I apologize if you can hear my neighbor upstairs. <clears throat> I think he plays video games and he gets to yelling and screaming and it's very inconsiderate of people that live around him, but very loud. I apologize if you can hear that. I think we always need to be mindful of how we're impacting others around us in their enjoyment of life. <laughs> At least I'm very aware of that all of the time. I try to keep that in top of mind with things that I'm doing. I try to limit my impact on other people. And I think that's only the right thing to do. <laughs> But that's just me. That's just how I navigate. Not everyone's like that. All right, so we've come to the end here. And it can be a little fiddly to get that thread to come pull through. So I'm gonna take my needle out and find my scissors, wherever they may be. My hidden scissors. There they are. So now I'm going to give this a little snip. I'm going to continue pulling this through. 
And there we go. You see how stretchy that is? Perfect. All right, so now what I want to do is weave this end in. And I have a loose end in the inside as well. And I'll attempt to get to that. But I don't really focus too much on it right now. I just want to get this top one done. All right. So I'm going to show you how I weave in ends. It might not be the best way, but it's my way and I enjoy it and I think it works perfect. So I have my, my end of my work here and I have my purl stitch here. So I like going into the purl stitch. I like splitting the yarn because I feel like that's a lot more stable. And I pull that stitch down and then I come back up through the top where I just came out of and then I come over here to this knit stitch and I go under both legs and I pull through and then I go back in there so it's not it's not an exact science I think weaving in ends is an art in and of itself <laughs> all right so now that I've got that secured I'm gonna turn this like so so it's a little bit easier to work with. Now what I'm going to do is take this thread and then just braid it down the legs. So I'm going under the leg, just one single leg of these knit stitches on this opposite side of the fabric. And I'm just weaving it in. And then when I get a measure of the way down, what I like to do is give it a little pull. So there it kind of just disappears into the work. And then I'll take the needle and then just kind of jam it in there, splitting threads, splitting the yarn, doing all kinds of great stuff and just pulling that thread through. And then I like to give it a few more pull throughs just to secure it just a little bit more and then I'm done no more now I'm going to trim so I got that trimmed off and I could turn this inside out here so I can weave this end in so let's go ahead and do that and this one you want to <clears throat> you want to be careful not to go through the other side of the work. So whenever I'm weaving in ends on stocking stitch, I like to just grab purl bumps that are on the outside of the fabric here. So I just grab those purl bumps. I don't mind about splitting threads. I like when my thread gets split because I know those fibers are going to lock together and that weave in is going to be great. That weave in won't go anywhere if those threads or are those yarns split and the fibers are locked in. All right, and give it a good tug every once in a while too when you're going down through here so you don't want it too tight to where it's going to limit the stretch. And I'm going up the side, kind of running alongside of those end creases, just making sure to stay on the back side of the fabric. All right, there we go. Snip, snip. Let's turn this back right side out. And there we go. <laughs> we have a finished object. Oh my goodness. It's finished object time. It's finished object. Now I'm going to do something here real quick. Now you're probably wondering, what the heck is she doing? So this is for my Instagram post. So anyone coming here from Instagram and looking for this very specific little section of the video, here's what you're looking for. All right, it's gonna last about 10 seconds in this video. <laughs> I hope you see it. I'll leave it over here for you while I'm finishing this. Okay, so now we've got 
We've got our little bladder, or our cover for our bladder done here. And we get the needles and the scissors all put away. So now we're gonna get our bladder. <clears throat> and we're gonna put it in here. So I'm gonna fold this in half, like so. And then I'm gonna keep it pinched. And then I'm going to just scoot it inside of here. So it can be a little fiddly at first, but once you get the hang of it, I've done it a couple, a couple 40 times. So I like to scoot it to one side. And then once it's at one side, then I control how it opens up. So I'm going to scooch and, and smush. That's the best way I can describe it. Scooch and smush. And then it's like getting a, a sweater on a dog that doesn't want a sweater on. You just got to finesse it on there. <laughs> so now let's get it adjusted. Make sure it's straight and looks good. And there you go. Get the little collar up around the neck. What a beautiful little hand knit cover for your hot water bottle. Now when you want to refill it, you can just pull that neck, the collar down, open it up, fill it up with water, pop it in the microwave, and then you're good to go. And you get it all sealed up nice and tight, and you got a nice hot warm water bottle to just help you out when you need it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and comment below what color you made yours in. I made mine in this beautiful <clears throat> red, purpley, pinkish color that's just beautiful for fall. Tell me what color you made yours in. And if you want, tag me on Instagram at Mountaintop Yarn. That way I can see what you've made. And I'll give you lots of hearts and lots of kudos on your new finished object. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.